Virtual reality is filled with a bunch of underrated games that nobody knows about, and the game studio Tentaclaws is the king of them, with three quality titles out so far. Now these three games they've put out, despite being completely different games with different genres, settings and storytelling methods, all link up in very subtle ways to create one of the best and most thematic trilogies I've ever played, even though it's completely unintentional. Now I've already talked about these games individually but let's dive into the universe once again to look at the Lost Game Trilogy made by complete accident. What was so difficult about this job? See, I can balance this pot on my head. Virtual Virtual Reality is the name of the first game in the trilogy and it's a pretty simple game at first. In the game, AIs and robots are in power, and whilst we never see the outside world as the game takes place in a simulation, it is implied to be heavily industrialised and dystopian. Inside this simulation, we work for a company called Activitude, which the AI overlords can hire out to help them with tasks and jobs, because even an AI needs help every so often. So there's an AI that tasks us with making him some toast, there's another that tasks us with tending to his garden, but before we can, we can do any of that, we first need to go through the tutorial so we can join and get hired by Activitude. And in this tutorial, we are guided by Chaz, the CEO of Activitude. Chaz, as you can see, is a robot and a pretty friendly one, feeling more like a friend than your boss. But something seems off, as when he's teaching you how to go to different simulations, that being by wearing different headsets, you get transported to somewhere wrong. Unlike the nice friendly environment Chaz was showing us around, now it's at these lonely liminal spaces as a mysterious voice tells us not to trust Chaz. After finishing the tutorial we get to do our first job, which as we mentioned before is making toast for this AI, which looks like a piece of butter. Did I mention all the AIs look like an inanimate object? Anyways, butter along with all the other AIs are complete annoying idiots in their own unique way. Since they lived a pretty sheltered life that combined with the fact that they have political power, they turn out the same way that a human would in this situation. Spoil rich idiots. The butter always insulting us and making us rush around to make more and more toast, which is alluded to be butter's fetish, because who knew a sentient butter had a fetish for toast? Yeah, he's weird, but luckily we're able to glitch out the simulation and end up here. This place is obviously the hub of all the simulations where they all connect up, the backstage area, and going from the bright coloured simple area to the massive place with a lot of attention to detail, it just has this massive feeling of existential dread, but before you can truly absorb in the atmosphere, you're whisked back to Chaz. Returning back to Chaz, the message from earlier telling you not to trust him is more relevant than ever, as it becomes obvious that he's just putting on a facade, pretending to be nice, and he's just as out of touch as the rest of the AIs, and he could flip at any moment, just corporate friendliness. A minor detail is that he's voiced by Ted Evans, who also voices in a bunch of advertisements, which adds to the whole authenticity of the corporate friendliness thing. Now that the game has your attention and it has planted the seeds that there's something more going on in this game in your head, it leaves you to go back to the previous gameplay cycle of just working for weird AIs who somehow are even worse, like the gardener who has an emotional attachment to his plants and goes into an outburst when you mess it up, or this AI who rambles on about appreciating the sunset, which seems nice at first, it becomes obvious that he's just making it about himself as he gets all mad when you try and interpret the sun in a different way than he does. But no matter how annoying these AIs are, you can always return back to Chaz. Despite obviously being the bad guy of the game, he's always willing to compromise and forgive you for any mistakes that you make. But bam, those voices from the beginning telling you not to trust Chaz return, telling you to find a place known as the Archive, as that has all the answers you're looking for. They also give you these tools that allow you to tear down the simulations, allowing you to escape, and from here you know exactly where to go. 
Now with our new tools we roll back up to the backstage and we're able to explore a little bit more, learning about all the different areas of the facility and navigating around, each with more hidden detail than the last, and then eventually we make our way to the printer room. The printer room is the backstage to the backstage, a whole nother layer of virtual reality where all of Chaz's dark secrets and unwanted things of the simulation go. Looking back, it's weird how far we've come from, from the clean Chaz areas down to this dirty, abandoned place. And this is my favourite part of the game, as using the printer we must explore a bunch of abandoned virtual realities to proceed. These abandoned realities range from a place like this campfire, which you can just imagine having one of those annoying AIs in, but no. Now it's just silent with nothing but the scenery, to these more abstract places which are more abandoned for more obvious reasons, like they were made by Chaz by some glitch in the simulation and Chaz just shoved them down here to get buried and lost. After going on this journey we make it to the archive, a place where AIs are buried and trapped under all the other levels, most of them completely unaware to the fact that they're trapped. And this is where we learn of the lore of the game, that Activitude was once two companies, Latitude and Activate, which Chaz managed to get in power of both of them and then fused them together, archiving the previous CEOs in the process. The first of the CEOs is Hernandez, who looks like a lettuce. Now this guy is the biggest douche of them all, yet all the previous AI's annoying and perverted personalities smash together to make the ultimate annoying AI. No wonder Chaz archived him. And then we have the second CEO, Eliza, who was Chaz's former partner. Eliza becomes self-aware that they're trapped in the archive, and tells us to go reset Chaz back to how he was before he became corrupt, so they give us admin powers to do so. So we go up to Chaz's mainframe and he reveals to us that those voices telling us to go to the archive and not to trust him were actually him all along, and he was just testing us to see if we were worthy to join him. As the whole time, he just wanted to upload us into the simulation so we could work for him forever, and that was his goal the entire time. There's a good and a bad ending here. The bad ending is where he successfully uploads us, and the good ending is where he, we reset him. Now when we reset him back to his good old self, he gives us a little bit of dialogue, and hidden in it, it's revealed that he was such a loner that the reason he's doing this to upload us into the simulation forever is so he can have friends. Especially after Eliza got archived, which is hinted to be Hernandez the Lettuce's fault. Virtual Virtual Reality in the end is a little single player game with a straightforward puzzle gameplay and a good attention to detail, and by the end it has a nice little message about love. Now this theme on its own is pretty neat, but everything has a yin and a yang, the complete opposite. And the best thing you can do for the sequel is explore the opposite side from a fresh perspective. And this is where we enter The Under Presents. I have an announcement. Would the owner or owners of a white station wagon please report to the parking lot? Your lights are on. I repeat. With the owner or own So far this video has literally just been a remake of the first video on this channel, that being talking about virtual virtual reality. But now that we're on the second game in the trilogy, The Under Presents, we can start getting interesting and start making comparisons. But first of all, The Under Presents and Virtual Virtual Reality on the surface are the complete opposite games. As Virtual Virtual Reality starts clean and welcoming, The Under starts spooky and unknown, with our body being formed from a dark ocean of mud, and then we find this mask which we put on, which teleports us to a sandy desert, in which we find a door and go through it. If that sounded confusing, it kind of is, but what matters right now is through the door we've stumbled our way into some kind of backstage for an entertainment venue. All this whilst being guided by the MC, yes that's his name, who like Chaz is the guide for the game, 
But unlike Chaz, who was putting on a fake personality which was more easier to like to lure more people, the MC here is very authentic, with a deeper, slower voice, and unlike Chaz, who explains everything, the MC gives very little context to the weird world you found yourself in, allowing you to figure stuff out on your own. Like how Chaz was voiced by an advertisement guy, the MC was voiced by a bar comedian, adding to the personality. A very minor bit of symbolism, intentional or not, is that in the under you start in the backstage instead of trying to get into it like in virtual virtual reality. So what is the gameplay of the under, what is it all about? Well it's quite a mess, after the MC leaves you in the backstage area as he has to go attend to some important business, you have to solve this pretty cool puzzle which I'm not going to spoil on your own, and then you arrive to the open world, which is where the second major difference between this and virtual virtual reality becomes apparent. It's an online game. Yes, there are other players in the game. Now the major theme of the under is acting, so players can't talk at all, there's no voice chat, but instead must act out and do charades with items of what they're thinking or want to do, which not only removes all toxicity, but adds to the immersion as well. And around the map there are a ton of secrets and puzzles for players to find, which took me a long while to realise since they're so hidden, so suddenly realising there was enti an entire massive bunker buried under the map with multiple entrances, a ton of lore, and half the server was camping out in was crazy. But even then, that's just the tip of the iceberg, as every so often Tender Claws brings on live actors, proper actors who will join the game with the ability of voice chat and other crazy abilities to just act out and be a part of the world, to like interact with the players and you know build the lore in real time, which is just crazy to see. I'd play this game until midnight just to see how many live events we could find to try and catch up on the storylines and it's a magic that I don't think can be ever recreated in another game again. All this is really cool and all, however there's one thing the game is missing. If The Under Presents truly wants to be a counterpart to Virtual Virtual Reality, it needs a story mode to parallel off what Virtual Virtual Reality did in its story mode, and it certainly has one within Time Boat. Now before we talk about the story mode for The Under, Time Boat, we first need to talk about its villain, and how it goes along and contradicts Chaz which we already have, as the main villain of Time Boat is the friendly guide at the beginning, the MC. Turns out the MC was no more manipulative than Chaz was and we just fell right into his manipulation. Anyways, what is Time Boat about? Well, the MC has grabbed a boat with a bunch of people on from the human world and trapped it in the under via an ice field, as the residents of the under, which are the characters we're playing as, just get to watch them suffer and slowly die in the ice field, with the goal of the story mode being figuring out how to save them. On the time boat, we're omnipotent, meaning the crew on the ship can't see us, and we can also rewind and fast forward time to get to where we need to, so we have all this power at the start, which is another difference between this and virtual virtual reality, is that we start with those admin powers. Even after getting attached to every character and figuring out how to save them, which is way more complicated than I thought, they still all kinda have to die anyway, as the whole thing is set inside a time loop, which the MC just rewinds back to the beginning once you're done for the next resident aka player of the under to do. This apparently isn't even the first time the MC has done this, as based on hints around the map and things live actors have said, he's done this many times before, however all the time loops eventually come to an end, as after a time loop goes around enough times, the people in it start degrading into mud, killing them, which is the same mud that we are born from at the beginning of the game. All this and the people in it don't even realise they're trapped and slowly rotting away. And there's nothing we can do about it, making another difference. Virtual Virtual Reality, at least we had a good ending where we could get rid of Chaz. In this one, the MC is literally a god and we're just a mud creature. We can't do anything but just continue the cycle. So the story and villain of this game, what seemed like a much nicer version of Virtual Virtual Reality, turns out to be 10 times worse. The MC has a complete disregard for human life, just treating his victims like props in a movie. 
His immortality as a god probably just makes mortals seem irrelevant to him. And hey, that's another parallel between him and Chaz. In Chaz's final speech, he says that he wants to use his immortality as a new way of living. However, the MC here clearly sees it as a new way of death. Not all the victims in his time loops rot into mud though. Sometimes he takes one person from each time loop to act as a janitor and work for him, sparing them of death, which kind of is somehow worse because now they have to live in fear of the MC doing stuff to them, as was the case of the Time Agent, as one of the live actors in storylines on the overworld in the online mode was that of a Time Agent who wanted to rebel against the MC for causing a bunch of issues in the timeline for all the time loop stuff, but he eventually got captured and brainwashed for the MC, in which it ended for a year, but then live actors came back for a run and a few years later, in which he broke free of the brainwashing, now that is some long term storytelling. Life and death and the existentialism that comes with it is one of the main points of the series, and most of the villains cope with this existentialism with immortality, but all that does is just isolate and inhumanise them, and the true real way to cope with it is just with connections, appreciating the world you live in and whatnot. The third game in the series is easily the most confusing, but at the same time the most interesting, as if Virtual Virtual Reality and The Under Presents are on completely opposite sides of the spectrum and theming, where is the third game? Is it in the middle? or somewhere else altogether. Virtual Virtual Reality 2 is a very odd game, despite being a direct sequel to the first one, it's the third game in the trilogy and shares a lot more similarities with The Under than its actual predecessor. The truth is I've been thinking for a while on how to script this part of the video, and I just really can't. Unlike the other games in the series where I was theorising about and talking about the philosophy behind them, Virtual Virtual Reality 2 is very direct with its messages and theming, in a way that if I did talk about it with the current style of the script I'm going for, it'd be really jarring, chaotic, clunky and weird. So all I can really say is that I'm really sorry and to go play the game for yourself and if you don't have a VR headset, go watch the Wolf in VR's playthrough because he's pretty cool, and if you guys are really angry and really want a part about Virtual Virtual Reality 2, then maybe I'll make another video of a separate style for you guys. So if you did make it this far in the video, do drop a subscribe and comment so I know that people are actually here so I can make a part 2. And thanks for watching, and I'm sorry again.